Welcome members to the fifth day of uh, India Tax Certification course. It so happened that uh, we received a communication yesterday evening by around uh, six o'clock that uh, the current speaker uh, we received a communication yesterday evening by around six that uh, the current speaker would not be able to make it. So I guess you'll all have to bear me uh, in front of the podium. So I am uh, filling in for uh, my teacher, Jatin sir. Um, of course, I've taken the same uh, topics which Jatin sir had to take. Abatement, remission, demand, refund, warehousing and baggage. Uh, as far as the case study is uh, concerned, uh, the materials had to be distributed uh, a day in advance. That has not been done. So, I felt instead of doing a hotspot, uh, you know, thing of uh, the case, uh, case study, I thought we'll have another uh, session and in the another session we will have a proper case study where in the info customs uh, we will send you the case study before like we've done it for central excise and then uh, the concerned uh, speaker would handle the uh, case study so for that session wherein the case study was supposed to be uh, taken uh, last time when Shiddha sir took um, we are not able to complete the classification aspect of uh, customs. We only did the valuation aspect, but we are not able to do the classification aspect. So I have just uh, picked out the classification aspect that was due to be done and I have incorporated the classification aspect in the uh, second session. So till the afternoon, that will be the agenda. The first session of course abatement revision, uh, remission and the uh, second session will be on classification. Yes. As is my custom, I start uh, today's, today's session uh, offering pranams at the feet of uh, my guru and uh, at the feet of my teachers who have uh, taught me the subject of uh, indirect taxes. The, of course, now all of us are into the fag end of uh, customs wherein we have uh, seen the charge of customs under section um, 12, the valuation of uh, the uh, customs duty under section 14, read with uh, the import valuation rules and the export valuation rules. Of course, there is section 15 as to the date on which, uh, what is the rate of customs duty that has to apply. That section 15 I will, uh, that, is, that also was a part that was not dealt with. So that aspect I have uh, gotten, uh, section 15. And uh, more importantly, the topics of warehousing was not given. Warehousing is a very important topic in uh, customs. You can't, uh, you can't uh, say that customs is finished until you have done something about warehousing. So warehousing has also been included. Something about trans transit and uh, transshipments. Small areas, but these are the areas where the institute would like to test all us, uh, you know, all of us. So those are the areas. And of course, baggage. Of course, the bag, like how I am a baggage for all of you today till the afternoon. So, I'll be dealing uh, provisions relating to baggage. What do you mean by baggage? Uh, how do you value it? How do you classify it? Uh, what is the uniqueness of a baggage? So, this will be the rough sketch. Yes, the session offline would be something like this. We'll deal, we'll start off with uh, remissions. Uh, then uh, demands of uh, customs duty, it's a bread and butter, then uh, the normal periods, then uh, interest, then uh, refund of duty. There are uh, certain unique uh, methods of uh, refund. I'll probably try and uh, match the refunds, these refunds with the central excise refunds and uh, probably, uh, you know, try and match as to what are the provisions in excise and what are the provisions in, uh, you know, customs and both are parimateria. I'll try and, uh, you know, give the parallel sections and I'll also give you how they are similar. Refund of duty is a bit different, so I'll tell you how they are different. Then warehousing customs, then uh, baggage and uh, some exemptions. Yes, 
the first thing in uh, remissions and reimports is uh, pilferage so what do you mean by pilferage there was pilferage ah uh-huh, pilferage is uh, transmission loss ha 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 so we will uh, we will uh, is that the of course we call it as uh, pilferage but is is that the meaning of pilferage what is the true meaning of pilferage to yes to steal in very small quantities is the meaning of pilferage we are stealing but uh, the other person must not come to know that we have actually stolen it so you would essentially require uh, um sir uh, sir first still barta the voice you would essentially require a kind of goods wherein it is not a one whole but it is summation for example all of you have got water bottles here a big container of water bottle must be there out of which two or three must be taken out that is pilferage so those are the kinds of goods on which you can do a pilferage if you have a big air conditioner you can't do a pilferage out of it so this will apply only for these kinds of goods pilferage theft of small items but uh, they seem to be costly items okay now uh, they say remission of duty what do you mean by remission what do you all feel generally understand by the english word of uh, remission pardon me sir sorry waiver okay okay foregoing of duty that seems to be uh, very near foregoing of the duty um say um i am transporting the goods i have already cleared it from the uh, custom station now uh, there are two concepts called as uh, customs area and custom station what do you mean by a uh, custom station what do you mean by a customs area custom station means three things port airport inland container depots customer a uh, custom uh, area would be in that port where is it located location of that port that will be the customs area so i have cleared my goods i have got the um, uh, you know let out order and the goods have come now and while transporting the goods after the goods have been cleared and then why am why am uh, transporting the goods In that time the goods someone have uh, stolen it can i get a remission during that time in that case can i get if i can't get why can't i get so at the time of clearing, time of clearing i have already assessed and i have already paid the duty so once it is come out of the um, you know hold of the custom station then the fault is not due to the customs uh, station the fault is due to ours so therefore you will not get the pilferage so where exactly would you get a remission of pilferage one after unloading so therefore the goods must have been there the goods must have been imported into india first item after the goods have been imported into india it must be unloaded that is from the aeroplane or from the vessel it must have actually come to the customs port airport or uh, you know port and it is sitting there and it is waiting for clearance what happens is if you have gone and seen ports it's a very small area and there are lots and lots of uh, uh, you know items which come in and lots of lots of items which are meant to be traveling out so therefore someone called as a custodian would be appointed under section 45 of the customs act now what is the custodian who appoints this person the commissioner or the chief commissioner is going to appoint this custodian what is this custodian going to do the work of this custodian is ha huh, the goods have been unloaded from the vessel and it is there is sitting in the custom uh, station from the custom station it has to be sent for clearance either it is for home consumption home consumption and tandre i have filed the bill of entry and i am taking it to my factory or else it can be clearance for a warehouse 
That is, immediately I don't want the goods, so therefore I can't keep the goods in the port itself, so I have to, I have to store it somewhere else. The place where I store it is called as the warehouse, so you can at least transfer to the warehouse. So therefore, these two things must happen. So before these two things have happened, that is, when it is inside the custom port, that time, if there is any loss, that time essentially I am not in uh, the position of the goods. So if I am not in the position of the goods, then obviously whatever loss is there could not be attributed to me. So therefore, if I have imported 1000 articles and say 10 articles have uh, been lost, that time can the department come and say, look, your invoice that you have filed, your bill of entry that you have filed is for 1000 articles. So pay duty on 1000 articles, though I will give you only 990 articles. Can the department tell that to us? No, it is not due, our, not due to our fault that the goods have been lost. Once the goods itself is not there, what shall I clear? Import means bringing from outside India into India. I am not bringing anything into India. Only thing that I am getting into India is 990 articles. I am not getting 1000 articles. Yes, it's a different issue. The 1000 articles came. But when I am clearing into India, there is only 990 articles. So therefore they say, actually I have cleared 990 articles. So therefore, pay the customs duty on 990, which means they are going to give you a remission of duty on the 10 articles. So after unloading, but before the, offer has, uh, before the proper officer has made uh, uh, order for uh, clearance for home consumption or deposit in warehouse. What if the pilfered goods are restored to the exporter? Ha. Huh. Now, uh, assume a scenario wherein um, the goods were there, the thousand uh, articles, uh, the thousand articles were there, and uh, when the custodian actually went and assessed it, or when the proper officer actually went to do the assessment, assessment is under section 17 of the Customs Act or only section 18 of the Customs Act. When he's actually gone to do the assessment, that time he has found out only 990. Afterwards, it has so happened that, uh, you know, uh, since uh, they are, the curvature is round, the, uh, these uh, articles have rolled away. And then the custodian uh, says, it, it's a big place where then they would have kept, and then they say, sir, I don't, you have kept the place over here, it's just rolled away there, you have not seen it there, so therefore he comes and gives it back. So therefore, something which I felt had been uh, stolen is now returned back to me. In such a case, I have already filed a bill of entry for 990. So how, how many goods should I pay the customs duty? Of course, the proper officer has seen, section 17, he's done the assessment, section 18 also, he's done the assessment, and he said, okay, 990 articles, so, okay, you amend your bill of entry for 990 articles, and I pay the duty for 990 articles, then I get the 10 articles. First class, it will be again importation, correct, sir, logically correct, so therefore, yes, yes, again I have to file a bill of entry for the 10 articles, and then, get the items back. Okay. So, yes. Correct, sir. Yes. Yes. Sir, if the uh, pilferage has happened before the course of the flight, then what has come into India is only 990. So therefore, when they are unloading itself, there is another section which is taking care of it. Section 22 and section 23 is taking care of it. That time they say only 990 has come. So in the beginning itself, they will say you pay duty on 990. Mm -hmm. Excellent question. Pilferage, the goods have been uh, you know, lost, not due to my mistake. So this 10 items, there is a loss of revenue to the government. If at all this loss is going to be borne by someone, if it is going to be borne by someone, then who is it going to be borne by? It will be borne by, yeah? That's the answer. The custodian will have to bear the loss for it, because... Okay. Sir, this is a case wherein not the value, it is not deterioration. It is not destruction. Correct. Huh. 
Yes. 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 That is a matter of your contract, sir. Of course, you can uh, against the portress, you can uh, you know file a civil appeal, but it's not going to uh, you know stay. It is not a subject matter of at least of excise. It is civil. Uh, Custodian has asset. Hmm. Within the custom area of the court. Hmm. Correct. Custodian. Custodian will take. Yes. The yes. 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 It is that's what I said. It's a matter of the civil suit, and uh, b- the only problem for you would be that. The custodian is doing a statutory uh, function because he is doing a statutory function. He has the, uh, you know, statutory um, uh, what umbrella. Uh, umbrella rather statutory protection okay. to him. Wherein they say he has done it in the course of his business, and there are a huge number of articles. So therefore, my personal feeling is that civil appeal uh, suit might not uh, be in your favor or stand. But yeah, they are Definitely, sir. If you have taken the insurance. Another question, if he has taken the insurance, if he has taken the insurance, then they will give the value for the other 10. So that time should customs duty be paid? Yeah, because you are getting the money for that. Uh, That's the answer. With the importation, bringing something physically, bringing something out of India into India. Bringing something from outside India into India. That bringing something has not happened into India from customs force. So, therefore, sir. Correct, sir. If it is a short packing, first I'll uh, two things you have said. Um, customs, you are saying that the duty is payable. I'll take the first item. If there is a short packing, kindly go by what is the charge under sex? What is the charge in Customs Act? Section 12 is a charging section. What is the charge on? What is the charge for? Getting something from outside India into India. I might have paid him for this one, but how much have come it? So when only that much have come in, will the charging section fasten on the balance 10? Don't you think it will not fasten, sir? Because it is not come in. Of course, I might pay him. Sir, if it is a, it is a malified... Yes. Um, so that depends your supplier might uh, still say I don't know I have given you 1000 watches I have sent the 1000 watches please see my uh, you know export manifest so you please pay me the value for the 1000 this one you might end up paying him uh, for the all 1000 watches yes with customs they will give a remission though you pay to your customers for 1000 they will, uh, you know, allow, uh, they will charge excise, sorry, customs duty only on 990. That is why this 13 is there. We are coming to that, so section 22 and uh, 23. We will just see the provisions and then I think uh, it will, uh, it will tell the answer. Sir. At the time of clearance. Yes. Yes. Uh, it is optional, sir. It is not necessary that your representative must always be there. Generally, the CHJ will be on our behalf because we generally be there in Bangalore. Uh, of course, Should the, if the company representative wants to go, and nobody is going to stop them, sir. While they are, while he is actually doing the assessment under 17 and 18, if he, when he is physically, uh, you know, um, verifying the goods, 
definitely uh, you have the option to stay there. But generally what happens is, and general business practice, uh, what happens is that we would have generally appointed a CHA because we regularly keep on importing that CHA will be there on our behalf and when he checks, he says it is uh, 990, the CHA would count on our behalf and say it is 990. Okay. Next, abatement on damage and deterioration. Major difference there, someone has stolen the goods. Here, the goods are intact, but the goods are not in the condition in which we wanted the goods to be. Damage or deterioration at any time before or during the unloading of goods into India. It's like how sir was saying that you know it is already damaged before it is uh, come itself, or during the unloading of the goods into India, when they are during the course of unloading, it has got damaged. Second one, this, these are actually three bullet points. First one is damage during or before. Second one, for goods other than warehoused goods, if it is damaged at any time after unloading, but before the assessment under section 17. So therefore, if I could uh, draw a consumption or before clearing for warehouse the goods have got damaged. That time they are going to give you a remission. Now uh, how to calculate damage or uh, deterioration? Deterioration is generally for what kinds of goods? First class, that's the answer. Perishable uh, goods. Damage other than um, perishable items, uh, plant and machinery, one part has gone or uh, say the AC, the first part has come out or the uh, inner, uh, you know, the tube that is there that has gone down. So it is something like this. How do you, how do you assess the, uh, you know, loss? How, what do you think, uh, how do you think uh, we could assess the loss? Resell. Very good. Who will resell? As a scrap. Okay. Sir says resell. He is giving a common sense answer. Okay. Sir, correct sir. Who will resell what? Pardon me sir? Yes. They will resell it. If there is a destruction or deterioration and we are able to affix a value towards it and that value is acceptable to the department then no problem on that value we will pay the excise duty however generally that will not happen we will tell lesser value they will tell more higher value so that will not happen so in that case what happens is if the goods of course one condition is that if the goods are such that we feel that uh, if I take this goods it is already deteriorated so therefore no question of me uh, you know again taking the goods 
I might not be able to sell it for a profit. Whatever, you know, that uh, excess duty, I'm, uh, customs duty I'm paying over here will end up being a cost for me. In those cases, we can tell the custodian, you sell the goods. After you sell the goods, we will uh, look at what is the duty that is payable. For example, the goods which have come is valued at rupees uh, 10,000. The value in the invoice, the value in the bill of entry is 10,000 rupees. After we uh, sell it, give it for auction, the value that is fixed for that is 3,000. Duty is payable at, uh, at the rate of 10,000. How much abatement could I get? How much abatement could I get? First plan. 70 percentage is the abatement that I would get. 10,000 minus 3,000. So reduction in the value is 7,000. So abatement is there on this 10 percentage. I get abatement of 700. So 1000 rupees is the end of first value that I have to pay, less abatement of 700 rupees, I will have to pay duty on 300 rupees. So there is. Um, if the goods are perishable in nature, then uh, within if they if the customs authorities will, they will also keep a tab on it. And if it is getting deteriorated, then immediately they will auction it. But however, if it, if the goods are something like this AC and machinery, wherein they will give you an option: Do you want to take it and get it repaired and then use it? That's a decision that we have to make. But whereas for something like all this. Uh, vegetables, fruits and all these cases, immediately they will uh, auction it off. If they are seeing that the value is deteriorating, immediately they will call for tender and they will auction it off. Of course, no specific time limit is given, sir, that I will wait for one uh, day or two days or three days. They will ask for our, uh, you know, uh, our information as to what you want to do, whether you want to clear it or you don't want to clear it. If you say you don't want to clear it, then uh, they will auction it. Sir, one second. Huh. It's damaged, and you yourself give you give a value. That value will again be uh, you know assessed by the customs department. If they feel that the value that you're giving is the fair market value, that then they'll accept your value. Most of the cases, practically, sir, they won't accept. Practically, they will say that uh, we will auction it and we will, uh, you know, they will say that uh, you, that is not the fair market value, but something higher is the value. Then we will say, okay, you auction it, you will only come to know. And it generally gets settled for the price that we have to. Sir.
sir if he participates only thing is he is going to bid look at it from at least this is what is coming to my mind if he participates he will have to bid for his own goods if he will have to bid for his own goods if someone has bid 1000 he will have to bid 1100 only no point in bidding 900 if this collision also it will only make in increasing the prices it will never amount to reduction of prices so it will be detrimental for him don't you think so sir and that is what is coming to my mind i am not that is something yes that's something even i didn't get it he's already paid for his foreign customer his supplier of course i didn't get that sir it's a real common sense answer I have already paid to my foreign customer. I have to pay it uh, to him. If it is damaged or destroyed over here, depending upon the contract. And again, if I start bidding over here, sir says then I'll have, I'll be incurring double costs. <laughs> sir, uh, I don't see any problem in uh, bidding, sir. We can bid. I think we'll close it there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, uh, I'm just trying to think if... Uh, that's what I felt, sir. It will only be problematic to me, is what I felt. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. Sir has a question here. He says, uh, we have got the goods, but uh, one of the parts is gone. So, I can't do the uh, repairs over here. So, I am going to actually re-export it. So, what are the provisions for it? Th sir, this is uh, specifically covered under section 20. Section 20, subsection 1. In such a case, they will allow you to re-export it. Re-export it. And um, only thing is, you will have to get the goods back. Yeah. Yes. So, that time they will, uh, you know, uh, export duty also will not be charged. But uh, whatever is the um, uh, customs duty that is there will have to be paid. But when you get it back, the same customs duty will apply. Yes, I have a scenario here. Goods destroyed by fire after order for clearance for home consumption is made, but actual clearance is uh, from the bonded warehouse not made. It means my goods is sitting over here. This is the proper officer, this is the good, he has come and he has assisted it. And he says, yes, now we can take the goods and go. So, assessment, everything is over. After this, 
I think there is a fire. And the goods are destroyed. So therefore, that time we will get remission. I will go back to the previous slide. Yes. Yes. I have given the order for home consumption. That's the point. You might have given the order, but what they mean is physical movement of the goods. You might have given the order for home consumption, but the goods have not yet been cleared. Since the goods are still there, you will get the excellent, sir. Of course, I have given you this one. Ha, huh. sir, what is loss due to transit, sir, was uh, making a point. Loss due to transit, evaporation, storage. Normal, uh, you know, the, there are certain goods which, you know, uh, gets evaporated. I think if I'm not wrong, uh, all this, uh, um, yes, so they get uh, evaporated and you know even in storage you will have that time what to do? Normally, I mean, um, he says I'm uh, sending so many liters, when it comes over here it's, uh, it's less than that, so it is not damaged, damaged means something should have happened to it, it's not damaged, it's not deteriorated, I can use the product, the product is as such. That's the answer. That's the answer. If you have something like this, sir. The contract itself, huh. Okay. Uh, fair enough, sir. Uh, generally, industry standards are there for these kinds of goods. So that time they will see if it is falling within the normal loss. Yes, they'll give the remission for it. They will give the remission for it. However, it is the abnormal loss of the normal part will give you the remission. For the abnormal loss, the part they will not give you the remission. That is how it works, and that's the relevant uh, case that I put for all of you. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to leave so fast. Yes. Sir, I have got the materials of, uh, you know, whatever is there. The goods are there. And then when I am actually taking it out, after taking it out, 50% I have lost it. From the customs port station I have taken out. There 50% is just gone. I have come, 1% loss is there. I have taken it out, 50% loss is there. I have lost it. It has come out. Hmm. Correct, that is why for an abnormal loss they are not going to give you, no? Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. 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 If the abnormal loss has happened over here, that is at the board, then the goods are not crossed in. The goods are not crossed in, only 50% of the goods is coming. So therefore what is important only on the balance is going to be tagged. However, it comes over here, okay, and due to our mistake, when the, when the inspection happens, even we will we'll also be there. Generally, for these kinds of goods, what happens, we are the ones who are going to open it for the proper officer to examine. He will generally not open. The Our uh, person, our authorized representative is going to open. If due to our mistake, the abnormal loss is there, then we will have to bear it. However, as you said sir, when it comes over here itself, when it is entering India itself, loss already out there itself. Now, no, no question of uh, paying uh, customs duty. It is not coming to India. Where is the question of paying it? Sir, sir? Huh.
Okay. Yes, sir. You have to do it. Okay. So now, uh, next we move on to section 23. Loss, relinquishment. 22 was damage or destruction. 23, I have lost it. Means someone has taken it from me. Which means it has again been stolen. That is one point. Second one is relinquishment. It means it has come, but I am abandoning the goods. I am abandoning my title to the goods. These two things are covered. 22, goods are there. Goods have not been lost. But there is a reduction in the quality of the goods. 23, one case, the goods itself is not there. Second case, the goods are there, but for whatever is the reason, I don't want to own up for the goods. These are one, two. Next, you have another destruction. We'll first deal with loss, relinquishment, then we'll come to destruction. Imported good lost otherwise than a result of pilferage. So, like how we were saying, pilferage is small. Now, other than pilferage, I have lost 25% of my uh, goods. Pilferage, I would have lost 3 to 4 percentage. Destruction. When has the goods been destroyed? At any time before clearance for home consumption. Then, third one, relinquishment of title of goods. Any time, when should I relinquish the title of the goods? He is given after he has come, he has done the assessment. And then after he has done the assessment, he is given uh, let out order. He is uh, given it for home consumption. After that, can I relinquish? No. Before he does the assessment. At the time of assessment, that time itself I must inform him. Look, I think the cost of the goods are uh, very high. If I take these goods outside, I will not be able to sell the goods at this margin. So whatever duty that I am paying over here, it will end up to be a cost for me. Business wise, it is better for me to leave the goods over here. My loss at least will be restricted only to the value of the goods. If I take it outside, I have to pay uh, demurrage charges. I have to pay warehousing charges, I have to pay interest, I have to pay transportation charges and after all this, I don't know for how much price I am going to sell it. So, if the business decision is such that I am going to have an excess loss, then you will relinquish. Then, deposit of, uh, yes, at any time before home consumption or deposit of goods in warehouse. Of course, goods, two things can happen. One, you can take it to factory, one, instead of, in other, instead of taking it to factory, you can put it in a warehouse. So, in both the cases, before the clearance for consumption. Thereupon, import, uh, importers shall not be liable to pay duty thereupon. Yeah, nice case. This is a shipping company. The shipping company got this vessel. But this vessel, when it came to India, was in a damaged condition. So, can I claim remission? What should I claim? Should I claim pilferage? Should I claim uh, abatement? Should I claim remission? Should I claim, can I claim all the above? None of the above? Sir says, if at all it is possible, it is only 22. Sir, correct sir. Why not 23? I will we'll go back to 23. 23 is loss. Yes. 23 is loss. Sign one is destruction. No. Only a part, a part of the whole is Correct. Okay. Correct. Therefore, I don't think it is important. Okay. Well, um, anyone has uh, any, inj- uh, you know, Engine, uh, the ingenuity ideas. Because the court came up with one. Sir? Oh, first class. Okay. Yes. In um, abatement, do you see the first condition? At any time before or during unloading of the goods in India, what has been imported into India? The vessel itself has been imported into India. So when that has come, that is, uh, there is a, you know, it has been destroyed or, you know, there is a 
problem with it. They said when the goods has come, that time itself is a loss. So therefore the goods were unloaded in a bad condition. So therefore it would fall under clause 1 of 22 was what the court said. Yes, the damage of the goods when the, uh, you know, the vessel made a call to the port. That time they said, what is the item of import? It is the vessel. Now, wh wh how is the vessel? Vessel is already destroyed. So, therefore, the vessel will fall under 22 because destruction at any time before or during the time of unloading. So, therefore, they said over here, destruction is during the time of unloading. So, therefore, we will give you abatement under section 22. So, which one, sir? Oh, vessel case, sir. Huh? I'll give you the citation, sir. Ha, when does import happen? When does, uh, okay, what is India? Bringing from outside India into India. So, what is India? 200 nautical miles. Twelve nautical miles? Twenty four nautical miles? Twelve nautical miles. What is twelve nautical miles called as? Yes. And twenty four nautical miles? Yes. Section two, subsection twenty one twenty seven defines India. India includes territorial waters of India. So therefore, so the the actual uh, you know uh, uh, importation happens not when it comes in docks over here. As soon as it crosses the 12 nautical miles, it is imported into India. It is not when it actually makes a call at the port. So, when it comes itself, it is imported, sir. Yes. Sir, I didn't get you. Vessel that has come into India? Huh. He is importing goods through Vessel X. Huh. Huh. Okay. So basically, it is not his goods that has come in. So, I have purchased Vessel X. Okay. Okay. Yes. It is Vessel Y. But that Vessel Y contains my goods. Liable for import, sir. Yes, the conveyance is, uh, the conveyance through which it comes is not a problem. What comes in, whether I am the owner of the goods, whether I am the importer of the goods, that is sufficient. And uh, if you see the definition of importer, you need not necessarily be the owner to say that you are the importer. Even CHA will act as an importer. So, yes sir, if it is coming in a different vessel, not a problem. Vessel has got transshipped. Okay, sir. Yeah, that they will do and the, in the import manifest, both of them will make a declaration. That in that person's import manifest, he will say that he is transferred it over here. This person's import manifest, he will say that I have received over here. And when he comes in the import manifest, the other goods, the other ship in which he have transshipped, he will declare to the uh, ports officer. As far as the ports officer is concerned, sir, he is just concerned with ship has come in, 
yes ship has come in now before he ship has come have you given the import manifest if you give the import manifest i will let you come in if you don't give the import manifest i am not going to let let you come in he will see the import manifest oh it is there this goods is there kindly pay you i mean from the customs insurance sir huh? for the purpose of insurance claim you have sir One of the questions that sir said while well, I was listening, as I was saying, was the goods have come without my knowledge. That is what uh, you said. So if the goods have come without my knowledge, sir, do you believe? Without my knowledge, is the inevitable. Okay, then okay, sir. Okay, yes, goods uh, cleared under green channel and found short. Short notice in the factory. All of you are aware of uh, green channel. Green channel basically uh, means that I am not going to. Uh, you know, uh, be stopped, or I'm not going to. I'm going to say that this is the value of the uh, goods that is there, of the customs uh, goods that is there. And if it is dutiable, I'm going to pay the duty, and I'm com- going to come. If the department feels that what I have declared is wrong, then they have the right to stop me then and there, and look at it. Or else they now also have the facility of coming to your factory. and having a look at your factory also both the things they can do so uh, assume we have come in the green channel that is they have not uh, the uh, proper officer has not made the physical verification of the goods and then i come to the factory and there i open it and then i find it is short so now will i get it will i get the benefit of abatement mind you it is a closed box that is coming in we have brought it to green box so that is why it has not been verified but anyways i have told that 1000 is the value of the articles that is coming in on the 1000 articles i have paid the duty that is nicely watch for example the sir gave watches 1000 that is nicely strapped box the whole big thing i brought it off to the company and then the company i start i open it and start taking stock it is only 990 which means i have declared it as 1000 i have paid duty on 1000 that has come through the green channel now i find in the factory that only 90 is there and i can establish it how you can establish it is in uh, some cases the when the goods actually come inside the factory the superintendent of uh, central excise actually comes and uh, you know verifies when the goods are uh, uh, removed goods are opened then let us assume in that case we can specially throw to the department and the superintendent uh, ar1 he actually signs that yes 990 goods are there he does his job and he goes so specifically you can show to the department that goods are short can i claim um, remission again we'll go back on the basic charging section it says section 12 yes sir sir when does the goods get huh yeah yes yes it can be for home consumption or home let us take it as home consumption yes yes then and there yes sir ha huh, then there is no question of shortage sir why sir okay correct sir correct sir correct sir after that uh, like how i told you there is a shortage of 10 items sir have to pay the cost okay sir my mistake i should have uh, taken it out and seen there my negligence can you tell like that would that be correct
Okay, refund. Take it as refund. It is a uh, refund is where you would have paid. Okay, take it as refund. Not a problem. Refund. Okay, can you claim refund? Yes. Can you claim refund? But I've already declared. I've declared it wrongly, no, sir. Huh. That's what sir says. You should have opened it and seen it and uh, you know done it. For not doing that, you must bear the cost. It can be done in the port area, sir. Sir, it can be done, sir. Sir, it can be done. Uh, it can be done at port area, but we don't do it because we do it under uh, green channel. Took a call not to uh, open it and see it. Input made a call. Huh. Yes, that was the answer. That was the answer. Wherein I said that is the superintendent who is assuming because this is an exact case that has happened in uh, Kenna Metal Media. In that case, exactly what has happened is the goods have been opened at the factory. At the time of opening of, of the factory, the superintendent was there. The superintendent has checked and he has authorized. Uh, sorry, he has signed it. Saying that yes, only 990 are there. That time, basic of uh, import, how much goods have come in? 990. <coughs> charge. 990, I will charge on 990. No, but only in grey area is. Sir. Uh, where has it been there? After clearance, before reaching the factory. That's the point. Pilferage has not happened. Pilferage has not happened. Because Green Channel, no one has opened it. The first opening is in the factory. Not to be for the superintendent of Central Excise. So no question of pilferage, no question of uh, stealing. Yes. So therefore, can we claim? Yes, we can claim. Yes. 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 Definitely, sir. Definitely. Definitely. It is uh, difficult to, you know, uh, provide it by evidence, but uh, say it is big items. Say, uh, just for example, I am saying, sir, um, say iron, uh, uh, you know, rods that is there. Uh, there, uh, he has sent, say, 1000 tons. He says that he sent 1000 tons. And then uh, over here we have paid the duty on 1000 tons, whereas actually it is 990 tons. Whereas you can show it by his uh, custom station there that when he has weighed it, the document shows it's only 990 kgs. I understand it's a genuine mistake from his side and our side also, we have also not seen. But at his custom station there, they have showed it, it is 990 tons only. It has been weighed as 990 tons by the statutory authority of say China. That time, so you have a very valid case of showing. You can show that to the department and definitely you will uh, get the uh, benefits. Sir, yes sir. To take a better example, I think the uh, business is the Yes sir. Excellent answer sir. Even I don't know. Excellent. Yes. I think it, it that fits into the facts of the case properly. Definitely, sir. Yes. Uh, ocean loss. Like how sir said, the loss is happening in the ocean itself. Available, not available. We'll get a move on. Yes, it's not coming to India, not, uh, you know, not liable to custom duty. Remission after goods are warehoused. Goods come here. Goods are now sitting over here. Fire. Sir, eligible? Willful damage you will not get it, sir. Let us assume it's not willful damage. We will get it? Sir, but we have already cleared it, no, sir? Yes. 
So once I get an advanced license, we have already done advanced license in the last uh, this one uh, session. So once I get the advanced license, then with the customs to be payable, I have got the goods. I don't have the advanced license with me now. So therefore, I tell the customs job, the, uh, you know, department, please wait. Put it in your warehouse. Don't clear it. I'm going to get the advanced uh, license, say, in uh, another 15 days. After 15 days, I'll clear it from the warehouse. So that time, is duty payable? Is duty payable in that time? Sir, the library will work. Sir, I think you do. <laughs> yeah, sir, in the exam that I was giving, sir, so if I if I get the advanced license in 10 days, then after 10 days, uh, if I clear it, will duty be payable? First question will uh, clear advanced license, then we come to this fire thing. So therefore, today I am importing the goods. If I clear it today, I have to pay the duty on it. So therefore, I have already applied it for advanced license. The government is in, a, you know, in the process of giving me, giving me the advanced license. So therefore, I warehouse it. Say, keep it for 15 days, I get the advanced license. So after 15 days, I have got the advanced license. Now they have got the advanced license. If I clear the goods, question number one. So, uh, customs duty will be payable. Goods have come before advanced license. That's the answer. At the time of clearance, do I have advanced license? That's all they ask. Advanced license, why? I am going to manufacture this much in the future, so therefore I require this much of inputs. That's all. These inputs have come, that time I have the advanced license. No point that when the goods has to come, that time itself, advanced license must be there. However, that is. It is always better to err on the safe side. Before the good comes, if you keep the advanced license, it is better. Or else the department is going to create a problem. But however, um, you know, it is a general position in law that yes, you can clear the warehouse goods without payment of duty. So therefore, in this case, fire has happened in the warehouse. Which means I have not cleared it. So therefore, would the duty be payable? Would duty be payable? No, I have not cleared it for home consumption. Since I have not cleared it for home consumption, so therefore duty would not be payable though fire has happened at the warehouse. It has crossed the custom port, it has crossed the custom area and it is sitting at the public warehouse or in some cases private warehouse. Private warehouse you are aware? Private warehouse is uh, section 58 of the Customs Act wherein you are a big company. Okay? Since you are a big company and you keep on importing the goods, so that time you can have a... Um, a big, uh, you know, you would have taken a big plot of land and you tell the customs department, look, I want to make this as the uh, private warehouse. Kindly give me a license. So that time the customs department will give you the license wherein you can keep only your goods. So when you have to remove the goods, you have to call the, uh, you know, concerned uh, customs official. He will open the uh, gate. Even he will, of course, you will open the gate, but even he will see. And then, uh, you know, mutually the goods are removed out. Huh. Manufacturer and a trader can have, sir. Yes. Yeah. So you want a place 
Yes. 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 Um, as far as the provisions of the Act go, sir. Um, first question: Warehouse has been defined. Warehouse has been defined to be either the public warehouse or private warehouse or bonded warehouse. Now, uh, second question they say is where the warehouse can be given. There they say in the warehouse station, and this could be a warehouse station. So, there specifically, to my knowledge, sir, there is no specific uh, embargo saying that uh, the yes, yes, the CHS cannot uh, own a warehouse. But definitely, if some goods are exported and some goods are imported, I don't think the customs department will. Uh, yes, sir, that is possible, sir. In fact, even in my private warehouse itself, if the department finds it difficult, they can come and uh, put uh, their goods, public goods, there. So, <laughs> yes. So therefore, revision after goods a warehouse, where the warehouse goods can uh, warehouse goods are goods cleared for home consumption. No, the first question that I'm asking you is whether goods clear from here to here is uh, goods clear for home consumption. If it is goods clear for home consumption, then gone. It is moved out, so therefore uh, no revision. If it is not goods for home consumption, it means it is still there with the customs department. If it is still there with the customs department, I can still get a custom, uh, remission. Yes. Anyone? Who would be liable? Peros keeper. Peros keeper. If it's a private warehouse, then I have lost my goods. If it's a public warehouse, it means I am not the warehouse keeper. It means someone I am keeping the goods under someone else's this one. It means that thing that public warehouse means where all the goods are kept. So if I have kept my goods with all the goods and if the goods is lost there then definitely that person is the one who would be liable to pay the amount. Of course, insurance will be there. He would have definitely taken the insurance, that question apart. If it is a private warehouse, it means it's my warehouse. You have lost it in my warehouse. Uh, nothing, we can, nothing I can do about it. Yes? Yes. Whether warehouse goods are goods clear for home consumption? No. So that part everyone is clear. Warehouse goods are not goods cleared for home consumption, they are temporarily kept in another place. How much time you can keep and all, I will tell you. Yes, sir. Sir. Okay. One second, sir. To my knowledge, you cannot, sir. Because uh, only two kinds of bills of entry I can file, sir. Only two kinds of bills of entry I can file. The first kind of bill of entry is uh, for home consumption. The other kind of uh, bill of entry is for uh, warehousing. So in warehousing, the reason I say you cannot pay the duty and then clear to warehouse is because from the warehouse when you clear the goods for home consumption, that time you will give a bill of entry. That day what rate is there, you are liable to pay custom duty on that date. You getting what I said? Yes. Yes. Correct. Correct. I don't think, to my knowledge, I don't think it will happen. Other than warehouse. Yes. This question is whether you can keep it in warehouse. To yes. Yes, non-bonded warehouse you can keep. His question is whether you can keep it in a bonded warehouse. You cannot keep it in bonded warehouse. According to me is because, sir, every time a good move out of warehouse, three things must happen. Either the goods must be exported, it must move to another warehouse, or it must be cleared for domestic consumption. Those three, you know, it is a physical control that happens. Those goods have moved out. Where is the document? Where is the bill of entry? Without the bill of entry, I will not let you, the, I will not let the goods to move out. So, so I don't think they'll take it in the first place, sir. Sir, yes, sir. Also, you will not allow the goods in. Huh. If the bill of entry is a home consumption bill of entry. Yes, sir. You will not allow it in. Correct. The answer is you can be allowed, but not in bonded warehouse. Correct. Correct. You can, in a private, uh, you know, that is, uh, you have cleared, you have paid it, you can put it in this one, but you can't. Warehouse per se, what we're talking in central house, central, sorry, customs, we can't. These are lists of the 
because i don't think he will take it in the first place for him to take it in the first place it must be a bill of entry uh, warehouse when he sees it is a uh, home consumption warehouse he will not even let it in Correct. We cannot. Yes, before it is a uh, moment, yes. You can cancel the uh, bill of entry and uh, you can make it a warehousing bill of entry. Yes, fact means you have not cleared the goods. You have not cleared the goods. 100 percentage, sir. Yes. Yes. Correct, sir. Yes. seems to be a different uh yes correct sir some means options of the answer is you can't sir sir uh uh-huh. bonded warehouse is a way uh-huh, correct is a warehouse wherein none of the goods are duty paid you call it bonded warehouse sir because you put the goods in the warehouse only if you have made a bond Yes, you have to make a bond to the, uh, you know, customs department that I will pay the duty, twice the duty amount. I didn't get you, sir. Huh. Okay. You have cleared it for home consumption, but you can't keep it in? Like? No, what sir is saying, I am unable to, sir, I mean, I, I have not faced the practical scenario, which are saying, but we have, once you, for uh, home clearance, if they give, they will push it out. They will push it out, they will not keep it there. Because if they keep it, there is something happens to them, it will fall on their head. They will push it out. I mean, I am, I'm, uh, sorry sir, I am not, not able to get that, uh, yeah, so we can all uh, deliberate. Sir, unbonded. Yeah, no question of unbonded. Sir, no question of unbonded warehouses in uh, customs act, sir. Taking the goods, uh, uh, keep it in. Sir, uh, yeah, uh, it could do, but a couple of points, sir. Port operator, to my mind, can never be the uh, warehouse keeper. They essentially have got to be two different people. Because uh, for you to be a warehouse, you must be, you must either get a license or you must be appointed as a public warehouse. Uh, to my mind, I don't think uh, port trusts will ever be given the, uh, you know, appointed as the warehouse. Possible, sir. Possible, sir. Yes. Please go for it in another half an hour. My fate. Yes. Where are goods destroyed the fire? 
goods in short whether emission available we've just deliberated now whether i i get the insurance also from the insurance company do i still get a remission yes we still get a remission because it's not clear ha huh. difference between uh, 30 and 23 because in 23 also there is uh, you know theft in 13 also there is a theft section 13 will prevent small theft 623 loss there is big theft including destruction in 13 we don't have the destruction or damage it must be stolen that is you will you will not have the goods with you all next up liability uh, re- uh, revives if the goods are restored some it is there itself in the port i get it back i have to pay the duty unless remitted duty has to be paid no what is this unless remitted duty has to be paid means what i have to read out the provisions then you'll understand someone can tell me unless remitted duty has to be paid which means unless duty is uh, is remitted means means what unless duty is remitted means what what is the meaning of that term unless duty is remitted okay i'll read section 13 for you i'll just read the language of 13 for you and 23 for you hope all of you get it um, i'm reading section 13 uh duty on pilfered goods if any imported goods are pilfered after the unloading thereof and before the proper officer has made an order for clearance for home consumption or deposit in warehouse the importer shall not be liable the importer shall not be liable to pay the duty act itself is saying importer shall not be liable shall not be liable section 23 that's the point accepted by whom first class that is the answer that is where this is going without prejudice to provisions of section 13 to the if it is shown to the satisfaction of the assistant commissioner of customs or deputy commissioner of customs that any imported goods have been lost so it has to be shown to the satisfaction of the acc or the dcc now uh, how we are going to satisfy him is a different question which is not there in customs act <laughs> but yes you have to satisfy him then and then only he is going to give you a order for remission whereas under section 13 yes section 13 i can automatically claim i don't have to tell him automatically less is there i am going to pay okay pilferage uh, before order for clearance is made loss or destruction is can be made at any time before clearance what is the difference pilferage before order for clearance is made order for clearance is made that is the difference over here only before order for clearance you must not you know you must not have given the order for clearance before he gives the clearance i told you section 17 section 18 before he goes and assesses during the time of assess i was showing it is uh, you know less is there so therefore when you are making the order itself he will make it for less in that case he would have made it after he has made it he is given for home consumption but have actually not moved it we discussed that situation he is given for order for home consumption not yet moved it it is still there that time it gets destroyed that time there is a loss you still get the remission loss only due to pilferage loss may be due to fire accident etc pilferage and small things are stolen fire accident these are all uh, you know um yes act of god over here no act of god act of human being act of man, <laughs> act of man. uh not obli- pilferage not applicable to warehouse goods section uh, 23 applicable to warehouse goods so um, just kindly keep this in your mind uh, i think this this is the areas where the uh, you know institute might test us no 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 not sure question <laughs> to my mind <laughs> yes it's 11:15 let's uh, let's get a uh, head on with in uh, point number uh, 11 okay relinquishment of goods importer abandons the goods not liable to pay duty under section 23 subsection 2 he is abandoned he is no longer the owner so therefore not liable to pay situation goods are in a very in what cases general cases will he go for a abandonment 
my own goods, why would I abandon? Goods are in a very deteriorated position. If I take it, I have to only incur cost of transportation. Not worthwhile to pay duty because it will, uh, the end it will, I will have incurring more losses, income for the losses. Assessment done on a higher side. It is uh, de- destroyed. It is deteriorated. That time I say, no sir, the value of the goods is only 2,000 rupees. He says, no, value of the goods is 10,000 rupees. That time he says, so you keep it. Next, uh, cheaper to abandon goods than to pay heavy duty. The value of the goods itself is less than the duty. Sir is asking a question. We have relinquished the goods. The department has auctioned it. Our bad luck, it is gone for sky high price. We will get the money? We don't hold the title to the goods. No question of getting the money, sir. Sir, if I can... If I can draw a fine distinction, sir, even when the goods are destroyed, sir, or deteriorated, that time we can hold the position of the ownership of the goods and still tell the department, you kindly auction it. Because when it is destroyed or deteriorated, we have not relinquished it. But we tell the department, look, I, do, I don't think uh, we are agreeing on the price, you, uh, you know, auction it. That time, if they auction it, we will get the money. We will get the money. Huh. I didn't get you, sir. Oh. No, sir. Because you'll get the abatement for it, no? For duty to be 100 rupees, the value of the goods can never be 80 rupees. Okay. One second, sir. <laughs> sir, fifteen minutes, sir. It can be. It can be. Hmm. Duty will not be payable at all. Correct. Yes, sir, uh, one point. Who is auctioning it? Kastanji Park is auctioning. So, one lakh when they auction, they get the money. I don't think uh, by auctioning themselves, they will pay the custom duty themselves. Me uh, me auctioning it and then me paying uh, custom duty, I don't think that happens, sir. Because it's my in uh, this one. I relinquish it. You are the customs authority. Huh. So, th- the whole reason they are doing the... Uh, auction is one second let me complete sir the whole reason they are doing the auction is by auctioning at least let them get the duty and th- value of the goods is something he is saying that he doesn't want the goods the goods have come to India at least if I auction someone else will take it if someone else will take it whatever the full money that I get from the deteriorated goods at least whether that will be equivalent to the duty if I do the auctioning ah, sir. Yes. That is the point. Definitely, it's liable, sir. Because in that case, I am the owner of the. I have written the title. Only thing is, I can't auction it. Therefore, I ask the customs department. That time they have auctioned it. What is the value? The value is one lakh. So you will pay it on one lakh. Why, have, why is the difference, say, let us assume auction value is 70,000, your goods value is 2 lakh, 1 lakh 30,000, why you will not pay? Because the goods have been destroyed, and the goods have been damaged, that is why they are giving the abatement. Oh, yeah. 
ओके ओके वन लैक वन लैक यू कैन गिव दियर कस्टमर इज टू लैक्स वट इज द एक्चुअल वैल्यू ऑफ द गुड्स विच इज गॉन आउट करेक्ट सर या सर वन लैक अंतर्रे ऑन टू लैक हाउ मच विद ड्यूटी बी ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड लेट इज पीक रेट इज ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड और टेन पर्सेंट लेट इज पीक रेट इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट पीक ट्वेंटी परसेंटेज टू माइन इज नॉट दे फिफ्टीन परसेंटेज फिफ्टीन फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड रुपीज is the duty which they which they are going to uh, 2 lakhs 15000 is 30000 15% is 30000 they are getting 1 lakh rupees sir no ha ah, yes sir कम ड्यूटी विदउट रेलिंग्विश विदउट रेलिंग्विशमेंट यू कैन यू कैन डू इट येस ओ यस One lakh. One lakh. Hmm. 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 But this is a case wherein uh, this is a case wherein this is a case wherein it is you are relinquishing the uh, you know goods. So therefore, price paid or payable to him is not at all to be brought into the valuation over here. Why are you doing the auctioning? You are doing the auctioning only to find out the goods value that you are going to get out of it, no? So where is the original transaction value that you will go and say price paid or payable? For customs purpose, if price pay or paid or payable, then I should have taken the goods. Then they would have valued it. Having not taken it, and now they are auctioning it. The whole reason we are doing the auction is to really find out what is the value of the goods, isn't it? Sir, that, sir, that is okay. Let us deal with the customs. Uh, huh? Sir, for excise there is uh, come duty. For uh, service tax there is come duty. I have not heard of come duty for uh, customs, sir. No sir, I, uh, you will not get the benefit of come duty, sir. Definitely on one lakh you have to pay. You have to pay. No question of come duty. Sir. One second. Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. Correct. Fine, but uh, you know, coming back. we have still not answered the main question whether it is payable on 2 lakhs or 1 lakh i am saying you have to pay it on 1 lakh no question of paying it on 2 lakh because like even if you say valuation rules price paid or payable and that is the price of payable to him why at all are we doing the auction because that is not the value of the goods yeah
Okay, you can say that. No, 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 no. No question. No such questions of abatement, sir. In customs, at least, no such questions of abatement. The assessable value now is one lakh, and the assessable value is not got after abatement, sir. First question, sir. first point, sir. For you to claim a abatement, abatement is nothing but a reduction in the value of the goods. There must be some provisions which will allow you to reduce it. See, Amota, I cannot uh, say that I am going to claim the abatement. Where is the uh, basis for me to claim the abatement? So to say that one lakh is abatement, to my mind, uh, there is no rules for me to claim it. And uh, what I am seeing over here is one transaction value is uh, two lakh. The same thing I have sold it for one lakh. So therefore, I have got uh, another transaction value now itself. The another transaction in the fair market value. Price is the sole consideration, arms, length, price, paid or payable, all the rule 10 gets classified, that is 1 lakh. So once that is uh, 1 lakh, I don't think you can still uh, keep sitting on uh, four, uh, 2 lakh uh, value because I have exercised the option. And for exercising such option, the provision say you can exercise the option. When the provision say you can exercise the option, the logical outcome of that option must be given. Or else what is the fun in doing this... Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not able to fathom, sir. Sir, we are not accounting, sir, not enough commerce. There's no anything that somebody will sell and no land for one lakh. Yes, sir. So, yes. Yes, there is definitely, there is definitely, that's what sir asked. Definitely you can send it back. Uh, if the value of the goods, or I'm sorry, if the quality of the goods is not according to your, uh, uh, you know, contract agreement, then definitely you can send it back. Oh yes, oh yes. Sir? Sir? If I am still holding the uh, goods, I will bear it. If I have relinquished the title, the customs department will bear it. Gen no, sir. No. It will, practically, it will always happen like that. Auction value will always be. If the auction value is a higher uh, value, then the auction value only will have to be taken. Practical, yes, might be, okay, correct. That value should be taken. No, 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 no. Auction value. When it is less, I'll take auction value. When it is more, I'll take... <laughs> sir, uh, would not be possible, sir. It will be auction value itself, sir. Higher value itself. Because that is the money that the other person is paying to the customs department. So that has to be the value, sir. Next. Okay, conditions. Relic when you should relinquish the title? Before home consumption and uh, before, depo you know, before uh, order permitting deposit of goods in warehouse. In this case, the goods could have gone over here and then there could be revision, then there could be abatement. For you to relinquish, the goods must not go here. Right over here, I must. Yes. Can owner claim uh, right of sale proceeds of abandoned goods? Can the owner, we're just asking, can the owner claim the, uh, you know, right of sale proceeds of abandoned goods? I have abandoned it, now can I claim? Yes, this is the answer. No, you cannot claim. This uh, is the decision. Can refund be claimed if I relinquished uh, before out of charge order? Can refund be claimed if title relinquished before out of charge order? Out of charge order means that order will say, yes, now you can take the goods out. No. Before out of charge order. Can you claim the refund? Yes, you can claim the refund. Before out of charge order is going and relinquishing it. So whatever I paid, kindly give it back to me. Hmm. 
Okay. Then I don't want to put. Yes. Yes, but uh, no, abandoned means means I am not come, I am not bothered. No claim. Yes. After some time, now I want to claim. That is when I uh, owner claim is coming. Uh, owner is coming to claim the uh, proceeds. Yes. Case, fair enough. I have written down and say I don't want the good. Fair enough. Fair enough. In this case, fair enough. I have not bothered about it. Correct. Until that option happened. Fair enough. Come, fair I enough. I have not given you the good. Give me the money. Give me the money. That is the story. Yes. So whether you can do it? Yeah, then, uh, of course. Okay, we've already so open secret now. <laughs> yes, you could. Uh, so you could. Should there not be a, a difference between these two? Um, well, it is. We, it is almost written on the same um, parser. Of course, you you have brought a brought out a difference, but uh, yeah. yes, 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 definitely. Yes, before auction they have to issue the sokas notice. Yes. Correct. Yes. I am struggling to come here. Sir. Sagnal. Sagnal. It's 11.30 now. Pardon me, sir, again. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's so happening that, uh, uh, you know, even I'm uh, struggling to, you know, complete. So, of course, all these times uh, I request you to come uh, early for other speakers. But now, uh, you know, I... <laughs> no, it, 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 no it, it, it actually happened when, uh, you know, this uh, CA final coaching class was taken and it was in the evening. And, uh, you know, the door was there at the end. And uh, suddenly the power went out. And uh, five minutes more has come and all the boys, uh, you know, are clear. The out, uh, you know, area is uh, clear. And... Uh, Next day again, uh, you know, we were all uh, sitting and uh, during the same time, the power fluctuation would happen and, uh, you know, the power got fluctuated. Immediately the teacher said, no, 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 go, you know, go latch the door. You know, teachers, uh, people are going to go out, but uh, yes. um, important points are there after this. I think uh, we should move on to that. Um, purely from the point that the institute would uh, want to test you on those points too. So let's not get uh, stuck up. Okay. Relinquishment of uh, goods can be made after uh, warehousing. Yes, uh, you know, it can be made uh, uh, after warehousing also. Anytime before uh, home consumption, pay rent, interest, other uh, charges, penalties. So, in the warehouse, you can do the relinquishment, but after you pay rent, interest, other charges. Can remission be granted to EOU? EOU has uh, imported the goods. After uh, impo importing, uh, importation of the goods, the goods have been destroyed. So, relinquishment can be granted to EOUs. Yes, you is like any other uh, this one. Relinquishment can be granted to them also. But the point that you have to keep in mind is, you'll have to, if it is a EOU, then they will generally be working, generally, most of the times they will be working under notification number 22 of 03 and 52 of 03. So if they are working under those notifications, they would be always be getting the goods without payment of duty or uh, capital goods without payment of duty. So no question of relinquishment because they would you know, initially not have... A, pardon me? For customs purpose. customs purpose, no change. So therefore, should not have. Generally, in cases where they have bought it on payment of duty, then only this will apply. Next, uh, yes, as we paid uh, duty uh, before examination of goods. On examination, goods different from invoice. So because the goods are different from invoice, as we relinquished this title and he applied for refund. Customs re-exported the goods. The department re-exported the goods. So whether refund is admissible under 27. The drawback is admissible to 74. With the goods, uh, with the goods clear for customs. Okay, can get drawback. We have all of you have studied drawback. Will you get? Will, is, will 74 get attracted? 74 and 75 we've done the other day. What is 74? 
Huh? First class. Goods exported as such. I've got the imports. I'm exporting it. 2% is the value. It will be taken as administration charges. And 98% is they're going to give us the refund. So for drawback, the essential condition is that it must have crossed the customs barrier. It means you must have cleared it for home consumption. In this case, it is not cleared for home consumption. It has come. What are the customs done? They have re-exported re it. So they have not cleared it for home consumption. Once they have not cleared it for home consumption, import itself has not crystallized. Import itself has not crystallized. No question of claiming a duty drawback. It will only be under section 27. Next. As he has relinquished the title to goods, he is now going to pay duty. Oh, I see. yes, I'm sorry. Yes. I think, as he relinquished title, comma, applied for refund. Yeah. Correct. Correct. The reason is, meaning of here, as he relinquished the title uh, and applied for refund means, he has given the goods back. Relinquished title means he's he has given it to the customs department for them to auction it. They have re-exported it. So therefore, whatever duty is paid, they are asking for a refund. Whether you get a refund, answer is yes, you get a refund. Okay, this you have already discussed. Value of goods, uh, 10,000 uh, goods after damage is 2,000. Duty payable, 20 percentage off. Now value of 20 is 80 percentage. Hmm. Re-import is a, not uh, this one. Yes, demands. Important. Uh, probably I'll draw, I'll, uh, you know, uh, draw a parallel between uh, central excess and service tax and, uh, you know, uh, revise the duty provisions there. Duty is not levied, short levied, erroneously refund. In central excise and in service tax, it is not, not levy, short levy, non-payment, short payment. Along with it, erroneously refund. A show cost notice over here issued under section 28. In uh, central excise, show cost notice is issued under... 11 capital A. Under service tax, uh, shock cost notice issued under section 73. All of them are pari material. Next. Uh, demanding what? Demanding duty and interest. Under uh, central excise, it will be only for duty. Interest is under, before it was 11 AB, now it is 11 AA. Under uh, service tax, section 75. Okay. Collusion or willful misstatement or suppression. There it is uh, fraud. Collusion, willful misstatement, suppression, contravention of the provisions of the act with an intention to evade payment of duty. Five items are there. Over here, four items are there. Of course, I, I, I'm sorry, I missed out the, this one. Contravention of the provisions. Relevant date, five years, uh, normal period, five years from uh, relevant date if the omissions and commissions are there. If the omissions and commissions are not there, one year from the relevant date. What do you mean by relevant date? We have to see. Yes. Um, once value enhanced and assessment finalized, um, can uh, value be enhanced by re-educating? I have filed bill of entry. When I filed bill of entry, I have said my value is 10,000 rupees. Value has been enhanced. They have said 12,000 rupees. After value has been enhanced, again, assessment on 12,000 rupees, department has said 12,000 rupees. I say, okay, fine. You want to, uh, you know, charge on 12,000? I will pay you on 12,000 rupees. I have paid 12,000 rupees. Then again the department comes and says, no, no, I think I made a mistake. It's not 12,000, it's actually 15,000. Which might be true also. Uh -huh. Yes, if that is there, then definitely he can do it, sir. That is not there. If it is, that's not there. What sir says is there is a, uh, you know, collision or a misstatement, then definitely he can reopen it. If it's not there, Closed assessment, you cannot reopen it. Next, so, if bill of entry has been assessed by the department, can I issue show cost notice? What do you mean by, um, okay, in central excise, in service tax, they issue a show cost notice, you file a reply to it, then you have the ordinary original. Against the ordinary original, you file appeal before commissioner appeals, you have the ordinary appeal, against the ordinary appeal, you go and file a department, file a case before the tribunal, the tribunal gives the final order, against final order, you go to high court and supreme court. What is the order over here? Over here, yes, first point over here, can the, uh, uh, you know, department issue show cost notice? It can issue show cost notice, one year and five years. Now, uh, what about speaking order, is it necessary that department must issue a speaking order? 
What do you mean by speaking order and like how we get order in original for central excise and for service tax? Should they give necessarily give a, a speaking order like that in uh, central uh, sorry customs? Pardon me. Yes. Can it issue show cause? No. You will understand what I say. Bill of entry. You will understand what I say. Five minutes. You will understand. Bill of entry is there. So can they issue show cause notice now? After the bill of entry is been assessed. Okay. The position of law is like this. The bill of entry, once it is assessed by the department, it is as good as a order that they have issued. Of course, I file the bill of entry, but when they assess it, he will see the what is the value. And once for that value, he says, yes, this is the value. It is as good as order in original. So once he has passed the order in original, he cannot go again and issue a show cost notice. So you got it? Because order in uh, or show cost notice will always be for order in original. Sir, yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Then you can issue then you can do. Then you can do. Okay. Then you can do. Then you can do. If so, within uh, what period? Can't. Then um, what can the department do if it is a straightforward case? We are generally going by straightforward case. What should the department do? It can't issue a notice now. It has seen it. It has made a mistake. So what can the department do now? Gone? Huh? No reassessment. I have finished the assessment. I cannot open the assessment again now. Bill of entry, I have assessed it and I have given it to you in your hands. So I cannot reassess it now. Which section are you going to reassess it under? No section under customs for reassessment. Hmm. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. But this one? What can the department? I'll, sir, I'll come to that. What's, what can a department do? Simple, it is as good as an order, they will go and appeal. Department will issue a appeal against its, own, against its own order. It's one of the other assistant commission is going to issue a order in, uh, you know, uh, appeal. They will file, a, like how we go and file the appeal before the commission appeals. They will file the appeal before the commission appeals. They will be the appellant, will be the respondent. Sir, uh, can you please repeat your uh, question once again, sir? All of you got it? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Correct. Hmm. Wherever self assessment assessment has been made by yes. 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 Self-assessment only. Self-assessment. Green Jan also self-assessment. Okay. Ha, what do you mean by relevant date? So, yes, sir. Yeah. It, it happens, sir. Now, um, this is a specific case. Uh, it happens in all the cases. Wherein the in this case, a refund was being given. The assistant commissioner granted a refund. Or in this case, the bill of entry has been, uh, you know, filed by him. What happens? All the orders that are passed by the adjudicating authorities. Now, who are the adjudicating authorities? One is the assistant commissioner, deputy commissioner, joint commissioner, additional commissioner. Whatever orders are passed by these people will be scrutinized by two people. That is, committee of commissioners. Whatever orders are passed by commissioners as adjudicating officers will be scrutinized by committee of chief commissioners. Now, if the order that has been passed by any of these four people, which is scrutinized by the commissioners, that is the committee of commissioners, that is two people will sit. If, those, if these two people sit and they say that this order is wrong, then they will give me an order. Against my own order, they will say, yes, you please appeal. So, against my own order, I will appeal. They will, get, uh, they will give an order to me saying that what order you have passed is a wrong order. So, therefore, can institute an appeal. Of course, a very, uh, uh, very uh, you know, bad, embarrassing situation to uh, you know, file an appeal against your own order. But they have done it. Where they have given us refund. It was a case wherein they have given us refund. Yes, there is specific provision. You want to know the section number?
sir uh, can you uh, see section 129 capital d shall i read it out shall i read it out uh, power of committee of chief commissioners of customs or commissioner of uh, customs to pass certain orders uh, the committee of uh, chief commissioner of customs may of its own motion call for and examine the records of any proceedings in which the commissioner of customs is an adjudicating authority um has passed any decision or order under this act for the purpose of satisfying itself as to the legality or propriety of any such decision or order and may by order direct such commissioner or any other commissioner to apply to the appellate tribunal for the determination of such points arising of the decision or order as may be specified by the committee of chief commissioner in its order below you have subsection 2 you have committee of commissioners the commissioner of customs may as own motion call for and examine the records of any proceedings in which the adjudicating authority that is the below people subordinate to him these are all subordinate to him has passed in decision or order under this act for the purpose of satisfying himself as to the legality or propriety of such decision or order and may by order direct such authority or any other officer subordinate to him to apply to the commissioner appeals for determination of such points arising out of uh, the decision or order as may be specified by the commissioner of customs in his order section 129 capital d capital d so yes yes sir he, he has um, say he has passed a order and what he says is he says such points so such points means what such points means he will see the order of the assistant commissioner or the deputy commissioner therein he would have given refund that point he is not happy he says refund is not given so therefore he will raise a point saying that refund should not be given then he will say why refund should not be given raising these two points he will again send the file back to me and say look you have done the wrong thing you should not have given him the order you should not have given him the refund order so therefore appeal against your own order yeah yes uh not commissioner the yes the assistant commissioner who were it is yes 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 Yes. The same person to kindly final uh, make an appeal against your own bill of entry. Yes. Who is going in appeal? Department is going in appeal or you are going in appeal? No, assess is going in appeal or department is going in. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Bar by time limit. Bar by time limit, sir. You have to find within uh, two months. If you have not filed within two months to the commission of fees, gone. Again, uh, they, they have got a uh, benefit of thirty days. No, 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 sir. Correct. Correct. D. Hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. You can't. Yes. Correct. 
not for order. It is only two months is the only point for the order. It is not for show cause notice. Okay. Now uh, relevant date. Now relevant date is given under section 11.5 of the 11B subsection uh, 5 of the Central Excise Act. It is also given under section 73 subsection 5 of the service tax. Both of them are parimaterial. However, in customs the relevant rate is different. This is the relevant date. Where duty is not levied, interest is not charged, the date on which proper officer makes an order for clearance of goods. There it is, where the duty has not been levied, the day on which the uh, return had to be filed. The due date on which return has to be filed, that date. Over here, date on which clearance has been, order for clearance has been given by the proper officer. Next, where duty is provisionally assessed under section 18, the date of adjustment of duty out of final assessment thereof. This needs an explanation. Where duty is provisionally assessed under section 18, the date of adjustment of duty after the final assessment thereof. Now, certain goods I uh, import. Now, when it imports, it generally so happens that they either dispute the classification or they dispute the valuation. Uh, the goods will be such for example, pharmaceutical drugs. That, uh, that was a case wherein we are dealing. It is a case wherein if I leave it at the customs uh, station, the expiry date will get over. So therefore, I am bound to take it out. So what we do during that time is, we will say you provisionally assess it. Assess it. That time they are going to provisionally assess the uh, duty. You will then be issued a final order. Now, what is the relevant date? It will start from the day the provisional assessment has started or from the day the final order has been given. Final, yes, show cost notice if I have to make, only from the provisional assessment, ordinarily will have the final order. From the final order, they will take five years. In any other case, date of payment of duty or interest. Yes, time limit, of course, I have given you, uh, 11, 8, 28 and uh, 73. Um, retrospectively, uh, for example, renting of immobile property that was brought from uh, 1st of June 2007. Um, somewhere in the year 2011, we had um, Home Solutions Limited when they said that only services in relation to renting was taxable. Renting per se was not taxable. That is what the Delhi High Court said. So what did the government do? Government went, amended the Finance Act itself. They said renting per se is taxable. And not only when did they do this amendment, they did this amendment in 2011. But what did they do? They did not make a prospective amendment. They said this amendment is effective from 1st of June 2007. So, retrospectively, they have made. Now, now, assume they come and uh, issue a show cost notice to you. Can they go from up to 1st of June 2007? They issue a show cost notice in 2013. Can they go up to 1st of June 2007? 13-7, 6 years. Can they uh, start from 1st of June 2007? No, if they can't start from 1st of June 2007, from when can they start from? Maximum they can go back is 5 years from the relevant date. In this case, if they issue a show cause notice for 5 years from the relevant date, will that stand? Will that stand? 5 years, when, when can it be invoked? Fraud, collision, suppression, misstatement, contravention of the provisions of the Act with an intention to evade payment of duty. During June 2007, of course, the matter is still pending before the court, but at least as per the Delhi High Court decision, Old Delhi High Court decision said it is not liable to tax. The new Delhi High Court decision has said that it is liable to tax. Now the matter is pending before the Supreme Court. So therefore, can it be taken as a fraud? Can it be taken as a suppression? Can it be taken as a collusion? Misstatement? No. It cannot be taken. So therefore, in this case it will always be, show cause notice will always be issued for one year. Whenever there is a retrospective amendment, of any of the provisions of the act, the maximum period they can go back is one year. They can't even go for five years because it can never be a case of fraud. In fact, it's the government which is doing a fraud on this. <laughs> saying, uh, I'll retrospective it, uh, do it from five years before. Okay. Next. With a simple letter asking for payment of duty, show cause notice. Now, uh, we have got the uh, newer gift from uh, the department. 1st of Jan 2013 circular wherein they have said that, uh, you know, they have started uh, issuing recovery notices. Whether the recovery notice is a show cause notice, they have just issued a letter. This much is the amount that is payable, so kindly pay it. Whether it is a show cause notice, no, it is not a show cause notice. 
for show cause knowledge is what is the most important thing the most important thing is they must ask you you must show cause why such and such amount must not be demanded from you for such and such a reason and most importantly they must sign it below and then they must say you have to reply to this if the, if simply letter is given wherein they are not saying you have to reply why you know it's payable or it's not payable it is not at all in the nature of a show cause notice in the nature of a simple letter show cause notice nature it will they will ask you kindly reply why it should not be demanded from you that team you will reply why it should not be demanded from you then again they will ask you whether you want a personal hearing that team will say yes i need a personal hearing that is a show cause notice simple letters cannot be equal into show cause notice first class yes no notice if assessor has paid uh, yes this is a, a point that is there uh, you know across the uh, three acts also customs excise and service tax where the assessor has paid the duty amount or the tax amount as the case may be plus the interest amount plus 25 percentage of the penalty amount that is ordered by the adjudicating authority within 30 days from the issue of the order in original sorry i'm sorry not issue of order in original from the receipt from the day i have received from the day the order has been served on me 30 days from the day the order has been order has been served on me if i make all the three amounts that is uh, duty plus interest plus 25 percentage of penalty then it will be deemed as if the proceedings have been concluded similarly can i make a payment uh, like this before issue of show cause notice yes that time will it be deemed to be concluded it will be deemed to be concluded if uh, he feels that only th- that much amount is payable from you if he feels say for example we have paid the 10000 rupees duty we have paid 5000 rupees interest if the assistant commissioner also feels that yes that is the only uh, amount payable then it is deemed to be concluded but one thing that we have to remember is we must intimate to him in writing that we have paid it if he feels no 10000 is not the duty amount that is payable 25000 rupees is the duty amount payable then he will issue a show cause notice for how much amount 15000 Twenty-five minus ten, fifteen thousand. He will issue a notice for the ten thousand rupees. It is deemed to be concluded. Okay, this is over. Next, requisites of a valid uh, show cause notice. Uh, okay, um, first one. Uh, probably this will help you while uh, drafting or while you know uh, assessing the strength of the notice if you receive any one. First one, allegation should not be you know vague. What do you mean by allegation should not be vague? For example, in uh, Brindavan Beverages case, they wanted to classify the goods. When they have to classify the goods, don't you think they must tell them under which head they have to? I want to classify the goods. They issued a show cause notice wherein they wanted to change the classification head, but they never gave the head under which they wanted to classify. So the Supreme Court said it's a very stupid show cause notice. If you want to change the uh, tariff, under which tariff? So therefore, that one mention of wrong rule, rule and notification, whether that would uh, take the no- notice out. i just made a mistake in the rule i have given a wrong notification that is not substantial it is not a substantial defect it is a defect but not a substantial defect to vitiate the show cause notice itself they for such kinds of things they can issue corrigendium to the show cause notice and then uh, yes notice must be served on the person liable to pay service tax sorry uh, the customs duty it means what mere issue of show cause notice is not enough it was we had a case wherein uh, the uh, show cause notice was issued to the person liable to pay uh, service tax but uh, before the show cause notice came to be issued that person uh, uh, you know unfortunately died he passed away so the notice could not be served on him so therefore the contention we took was notice was issued but it's not been served so since it's not been served the uh, proceedings is uh, you know void ab initio and the uh, apex court uh, the high karnataka high court said correct yes dinan gandhi case wherein we said that yes the notice itself is not valid because you have not served it on the person liable to pay service tax sorry duty <coughs> no legal head. no sir it was in this case it was served on his son son is nothing but legal head so therefore they demanded excise duty on him and they demanded since the father was no longer alive they issued it on his son so our first contention was that his son was not the one who is the manufacturer the manufacturer was his father so therefore you will have to issue it to the manufacturer since the manufacturer itself is not there you cannot uh, demand the duty yeah okay next uh, refund of duty refund of duty is following section section 11b in central excise act 27 in the uh, customs act there are 
Customs Act is unique for as far as refunds is concerned. Section 27 is the basic uh, section for uh, customs. Then uh, Section 83 of the Service Tax Act makes Section 11B itself as applicable to service tax also. You don't have a separate uh, refund section in service tax. The, uh, the um, cornerstone for refund was Mafatlal in this case. They were the one who said that, uh, you know, you cannot, the concept of unjust enrichment. It cannot be a case wherein you are, uh, you know, writing uh, duty payable or service tax payable and recovering the money from your clients also and saying that the duty is not payable and recovering the money from the government also. So therefore you cannot be put in a better off position than what the other people are. So therefore you cannot make profit with the government. So therefore unjust enrichment you cannot uh, claim it. What happens if the refund itself is unconstitutional? Sorry, the duty itself is unconstitutional. Uh, example, I'll uh, give you uh, 66A. Or if you remember uh, reverse charge, 66A. The 66A was introduced from 18406. So therefore, here the uh, show cost notice was issued prior to uh, 18406. On, only on the basis of rule, rule 2-1-D. One of the uh, points that was uh, taken in this particular uh, case was that since the service was being provided outside India and also used outside India, so therefore, service tax itself was not payable. But what had happened in this case, the SSE had uh, CO motor paid. So therefore, he had asked for a refund, which they said that they are not going to pay. So therefore, we said the levy itself is unconstitutional. No doubt my client has paid the money under 66A, but it was not payable because service provided outside India, used outside India, so it is not used within India. So therefore, service tax does not apply. So therefore, since service tax does not apply, I have given it to you, which means you have collected it. You don't have the authority to collect it. Because you don't have the authority to collect, it's a unconstitutional levy. Since it's unconstitutional levy, kindly pay it back. Whether the uh, limitation period would apply? Uh, for refund, within how many uh, months uh, should you apply? Section 11b, one year. When will that one year uh, not apply? No. When duty is paid under protest. When duty is paid under protest, the one year period will not apply. If this unconstitutional levy, will the one year period apply? It will not apply because first of all it is unconstitutional levy. It means you are not collecting within the provisions of Central Excise Act. If you are not collecting within the provisions of Central Excise Act, it is not an excise duty. If it is not excise duty, Section 11B will not be applicable to it. If Section 11B is not applicable to it, that one year time limit will not apply. So therefore it is a civil uh, remedy that you will have to take. Limitation period, law of limitation, three years. So what if he has passed over the other party, then he cannot pay the Definitely he can't. Even if it Yes, he can't because it's a case of uh, outright case of unjust enrichment. But the person to whom he has passed off, I have uh, you know charged and I passed it to you. You can claim it. Okay, okay. Constitution next. Uh, refund of export duty under section. There are three sections for um, uh, you know refund basically under uh, Customs Act. One is refund of export duty under section 26. Then you have the refund of import duty, and finally you have the and under 26A and uh, finally you have the refund for uh, both of them under section 27. What is the special uh, point about section uh, 26? Goods are exported, point number one. Second, such if goods are exported and in this case he has paid the export duty. Uh, now I think there are about uh, uh, 29 items for uh, which are liable to export duty out of which I think exemption is there for 26. So only iron and steel and uh, only those items are uh, taxable. So goods are exported on payment of duty. So export duty is paid. Such duty shall be refunded, refunded by the government to the person by whom or on whose behalf it was paid. Basically the exporter. If the goods are returned to such person otherwise than by way of resale. I have given him, he says there is a defect in my goods. And he sends me back. He sends the goods back. So that time I have, writ I have got the goods back. So when I have exported the goods, I have paid the export duty. Now he has sent the goods back to me. So therefore he says, whatever export duty I have paid, kindly give me the refund. Next, the goods were re-imported within one year from the date of export. That is, first point is one point of its own. Second and third point are related. 
second and third point there is a an and between the second and third point the goods are reimported within one year from the date of exportation i have exported today within one year i have got the goods back an application for refund of such duty is made before the expiry of 6 months from the date on which proper offer makes uh, order for clearance so within one year i have got it after i got it within one year say uh, he passes a let export sorry uh, order for clearance within another 30 days from the 30 days 6 months i have to do and i have to claim the refund that is under 26 not much of uh, not much of a practical uh, value refund of import duty this has a practical value goods uh, capable of being uh, refund of import duty so therefore over here i have uh, imported the goods i have paid the import duty after i paid the import duty now i am asking a refund of it what is the situation how can i ask it when can i ask it goods capable first thing the goods must be capable of being identified so if the goods have come i there must be a special you know markings must be there that these are the goods which i have imported it's applicable only for those kinds of goods duty paid on clearance for home consumption i have got it i have paid the duty and i have cleared it next duty refunded when is duty refundable these conditions goods found defective or otherwise not in conformity with agreed the specifications between the importer and supplier of goods of course i have gone i have seen it in the factory in the factory i have seen i have told him to send uh, uh, 26 megawatt uh, battery or 26 megawatt uh, uh, generator he sent me a uh, 30 megawatt generator so therefore it is not matching with the specifications so that is a specifically identifiable goods goods identified to the satisfaction of acc this is where the problem is you will have to satisfy him then um, the goods uh, you know does not claim the importer does not claim uh, uh, drawback under any of the provisions of the act in this case he would have exported so therefore he must not have claimed the drawback then refund of import duty is available please note in the last there is something called as and these so first i have got the goods the goods are not proper because the goods are not proper i have identified the goods after i have identified the goods what have i now done i have exported the goods back so i have imported the goods paid the customs duty brought it to my factory in the factory i came to know that it is defective or it is not matching to my specifications so what did i do now i have actually sent the goods back i have exported the goods back so it is as good as i should have not have imported it at in the first place i should have not paid the import duty in the first place so goods are exported and importer relinquishes his title for the goods and abandons them so and this must happen within a period of 30 days yes sir yeah okay Hmm. first point sir he is a, a duty drawback he is claimed he can't claim it over here let us assume he is not uh, claim duty drawback if it's duty drawback he cannot claim a refund over here under section 26 capital a so let us assume that he is not claimed a duty drawback in your case wherein you are doing cost plus so you have received it for 1000 you are sending it back to him for 2000 rupees i don't think you will be able to claim the credit it is you have got it it is not proper you have to send it back as such at the same value it is basically meant to facilitate cases wherein i have got the goods but the goods are in defective position so i i am sending them back only for repairs i can't get the repairs done over here hmm hmm so goods must be found defective or otherwise not in conformity with the agreed to specification so is the defective goods he is sending it to another party why the that is why the section has come uh, to my mind it should not happen but you could try it out sir
to my mind i don't think you will be able to, i don't think the department will allow it for you sir. and that's what that is what i feel sir right out sir ha so therefore ha so therefore I don't think it would uh, I thought you will be able to get it sir because in this case the goods essentially that you are re-exporting must be in a defective form or a deteriorated form it is then and then only you are going to get this benefit of the refund over here if you are going to send it at cost plus method and all those methods then the department will say that is your import transaction this is a export transaction just because you can identify the goods like this i don't think uh, i should be uh, you know giving you the benefit of uh, refund you can try it out sir Yeah, it is a separate export transaction, so you can't get the refund of your imports. It is not import import, but you can claim the uh, benefit and then you will pass the profit. Try it out, sir. Probably you may get it, sir. Please try. Um, yes, uh, refund is duty. Duty is over. Then, are you? No, 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 no. One second. Why how say? Why do you why do you need to go to? Of course, uh, not much. I'll tell uh, thirty. I'll uh, try and move fast. Warehousing. Why do you do warehousing first of all? Fast goods not required immediately. So therefore, I put it in warehouse. Goods stored in. The, I don't have the money to pay the duty, so I put it in now uh, warehouse. I don't want to pay the duty now. I want to pay the duty later. For example, I gave you an advance license, wherein as of today I have to pay the duty. But if I get an advance license, there will be no liability for me to pay the duty. So to defer the payment of customs duty, no, no payment of duty till goods. Okay, if you have it in the warehouse, then what are they saying? Till the goods are there in the warehouse, no need for you to pay the duty. Facilities available not only to you know manufacturers but also to traders. Then. Um, Okay, this is the important uh, planning purchases. Okay, bonded warehouse uh, manufacture. Yes, bonded warehouse. Now, what is it? What do you mean by a bonded warehouse? A bonded warehouse, or uh, at least uh, in by bonded warehouse, what I mean over here is a in bond warehouse. What do you mean by a in bond warehouse? A in bond warehouse will generally be taken by a manufacturer, manufacturer exporter. Now, what does this uh, manufacturer export exporter do? he will import the goods he will keep the goods in the warehouse in the warehouse he will seek permission from the customs department to undertake a processing on that or to undertake manufacturing itself on that so therefore the process that he does in the inbound warehouse it might amount to manufacture it might not amount to manufacture okay both these things happen after he does both these things then he exports the same goods to not definitely not necessary to the person from whom he's got it to whom ever want he can export it in such a case warehouse will really be helpful to him because he would have not paid the import duty because goods have not been cleared for home consumption no need to pay export duty because export, export duty generally not it's payable on two or three goods so therefore in such a case the warehousing is going to assist him in bond uh, warehouse avoid payment of uh, demurrage and uh, pilferage that is if it is there at the port and uh, there was pending import authorization that i have told you yes sir so demerit is is charged only for the uh, uh, goods are kept in the port uh, by the custodian when you keep the goods in the warehouse it will be only rent that is charged it pardon me sir rent sir 
you can claim a SAT refund provided on the invoices that you give to your clients. You say that uh, the sales tax on that cannot be claimed. Cannot be claimed as a credit by the cannot be claimed as a sales tax credit by the person to whom you have sold it. That time you can claim a uh, SAT credit. Pardon me, come again? Hmm. No such condition is uh, there in the. Yeah. Sir, first point whether the identification of that goods is required under the notification because. Uh, to my mind, I have actually done a case of uh, this one. So, to my mind, okay, what I have done, uh, the first condition of saying that identifying that the same goods must be there, to my mind, that condition is not there in that notification. The condition, the only condition that is there, and second one, that it should not be manufactured. It must not be used for manufacture. Again, that condition, I am not very sure that that condition is there. The only condition that they say, sir, is that in your invoice you must put a seal that I have claimed this ad refund so therefore you please don't claim the sales tax credit on this to my mind these are the conditions sir. I have uh, I, I don't uh, see the uh, other conditions Definitely you can claim. If he is not claiming the credit, point of saying is he must not claim the credit of sales tax. If he is, yeah, that is what I was trying to tell you. If he is not claiming, if the person to whom you are selling, he doesn't claim the credit of VAT. Okay. 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 Uh, he can claim only if he's put the, uh, you know, still he's put the declaration that uh, you, you should not claim the credit. That's all. That that's the only condition that is there. He can uh, he can still claim the refund. Hmm. We will uh, check it up, sir. To my mind, uh, it is not. If you are saying it is there, uh, it must be there. But uh, what I have done, I have uh, not come across it. So, of course, the manuals are there over here. We will check it up. Of course, I, I don't recall the notification number. Do you recall the notification number? We will check it up. I think it will be 37 of 2004, if I am not wrong. One second. Thirty of two Pardon me, sir. Even I am uh, unable to recall the notification number. Pardon me, sir. 15? One second, sir.
sorry sir i'm not able to locate it but uh, definitely we will see it sir both the books are over here just doing this modification itself to my mind uh, manufacturing is not there uh, let us see what it is um, warehousing bond imported goods uh, kept in warehouse without payment of duty if you keep the imported goods without uh, payment of duty then you have to execute a bond the bond is equivalent to twice of twice the amount of duty assessed while the bond is valid the goods can be transferred from one person to another person that is i can sell the goods to another person while the bond is sitting in the warehouse and the goods while the bond is there the goods can be transferred from one warehouse to another warehouse no sir both the warehouses are there in india so therefore it is not high sales yes your this one material yeah. ha hmm. okay oh you're saying that only the tra- uh, traders can avail the uh, credit so therefore uh, you cannot uh, you know the goods must be sold as such correct 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 that is also there i remember that yes correct i remember that for already have registered the company there at that particular state yes um yes that is one point sir but uh, fine sir uh, to my mind as a manufacturer if i am uh, you know uh, manufacturer and i am actually uh, selling it and i use it uh, I don't know sir we'll uh, agree to disagree on it <laughs> we'll agree to disagree on it okay types of warehouses public warehouse okay we have talked about this public warehouse private warehouse public warehouse is uh, appointed private warehouse is uh, licensed next uh, warehousing period yes to what period in the warehouse to what period you can uh, keep the goods bifurcation eou goods non eou goods in eou goods again bifurcation capital goods inputs capital goods 5 years inputs 3 years non eou whether capital goods or inputs one year so that is what is uh, given afterwards of course you can ask for extension of period for extension of period eou after expiry yes uh, for eou they will give you extension for non eou they will give you maximum of another one year of extension so maximum is you can keep it for two years most importantly yes what is it that you can do with uh, the goods during the uh, warehousing period you can inspect the goods separate it sort it uh, deal with it uh, you know show the goods for uh, sale take samples of uh, the goods not uh, that important next yes this is important when the goods have uh, been there in the uh, warehouse when the goods are there in the warehouse then uh, you have uh, you know done some process on it after you have done some process on it you have manufactured another product after you manufactured another product then you have sold the product question is will the excise duty would be liable on it manufacturing or other operations carried on manufacturing or processing activity carried on inside the warehouse of course with the sanction of the assistant commissioner and you have exported the final product this provision is applicable to eou stp ehtp and btp they op- that is by technology park they have obtained license from the department and removal of course removal you can do it uh, when final product is exported when pro- final product is cleared to dta when final product is cleared to dta of course what what duty will you pay you will pay excise duty or you pay customs duty customs duty in the form of excise like it is the amount equivalent to excise customs duty will be amount equivalent to excise such a provision is there in the excise or such a provision is not there in the customs ha huh? ha uh, equal to customs duty so therefore when you actually clear it from your uh, warehouse will you pay customs duty that is import duty or will you pay excise duty ah uh, pardon me pardon me 
that is when the goods are cleared by a hero user this is the goods are being cleared by a warehouse rule 37 what you're talking about that is notification 23 of uh, 2003 that is for eou this is not eou sir this is a warehouse i can i can be a person other than eou also i could have done it so therefore uh, excess duty or customs duty i have filed a, have i filed for uh, have i filed a bill of entry for home consumption if i have not filed a bill of entry for home consumption has the goods come into india no. if the goods has not come into india first uh, uh, you know uh, session for excess duty to be levied the goods must be manufactured in india, india. whether the goods are manufactured in india no <laughs> i have not yet filed the entry for uh, uh, you know home consumption so therefore the goods have not yet come into india when the goods have not yet come into india you file the bill of entry for home consumption to get it in through to dta you no know? so it's not there in india you have to pay your you have to pay your doubt ah i'm i'm telling you the answer it is uh, it's there in the warehouse from the warehouse you have to take it out means you have to file the bill of entry to get it inside which means where is it whether it's in india physically it's in india but for the purpose of customs act is it in india it is not in india so therefore would excess duty at all attract that's all next clearance from uh, bonded warehouse yes sir yes sir yes sir. yes you can get it you can get it another point yes uh, uh, another point i forgot you can get the inputs into the bonded warehouse when you do the inputs you will have some if is some waste is generated so, uh, sir ask a question can you get the inputs into the bonded warehouse from the dta answer is yes sir you can get it after you do it another provision i forgot was uh, when you doing this manufacturing activity if some waste is generated or some scrap is generated what happens about that waste of the scrap two points if the waste in the front of the customs officer is destroyed then no no duty at all if the waste again is brought to the dta which means it has a transaction value which means it is generating some amount of income then again on that you will have to pay the customs duty yeah transaction value let pay the customs yes sir sir because uh, he has got the goods without payment of duty now he will uh, use the other goods and then he'll export it he'll export it the final pro- no he can either export it or he can uh, bring it to dta also that is left to the importer and the assing officer cannot question sir he says i have if i have got a inbound warehouse that is i have got a license for inbound warehouse inbound warehouse means it is for the purpose of manufacture or carrying out a process so he can either get it to dta or he can uh, re export it if he is getting it to dta he'll pay the customs duty if he is re exporting it uh, no duty import is not paid without duty export he will uh, pay without payment of duty sir yeah my on the transaction value the total value but total value is included in my domestic purchase also yes and if i do a customs duty <laughs> only customs duty because it's there in the warehouse you might have duty paid the uh, goods into it um if it's a expound warehouse then you could also uh, you know uh, get the goods without payment of duty you could also get it without payment of duty assuming you got with payment of duty itself even then it's just a transaction value the only thing is that uh, whatever is the excess duty will be a cost for you you can so before you could have uh, claimed no sir now also you can claim no problem the new and the, the present formula also applies yes it applies you can you can claim so if you have exported you can claim but service in this case saying that i have got it to dta that was his question so therefore what should be the transaction value so if he's got it for dta you can use the uh, uh, credit for uh, 
no you, no no you can't use this invoice that is this, uh, you know custom duty for cvd payment you can uh, utilize this okay clearance from uh, bonded warehouse for we have a small example like we import it at 100 rupees hmm ओके ओके हाँ सर फॉर द हंड्रेड रुपीज यू वॉट वे यू हैव गॉट इट दट यू गॉट इट फ्रॉम डी टी ए इम्पोर्टेड सो देर फॉर यू नॉट अ पेड इन ड्यूटी एट ऑल ऑन दैट ओके हाँ करेक्ट करेक्ट ऑन वन फिफ्टी रुपीज On 150 rupees. Yes, 150 upon that uh, basic customs duty. Add uh, 150 plus basic customs duty. On that, add CVD. On that, charge CVD for the 150 plus. Let us assume uh, 10 percentage, so 165. On 165, charge CVD. You will get some amount. Add that. After adding that, then uh, education says secondary higher education says. Then you will get your uh, total excess duty. <laughs> on that add uh, education says and secondary higher education says ex- again for uh, customs and then sales tax sir ha could be done sir no could be could be done sir not a problem and i don't think uh, it would amount to evasion of the tax also because when afterwards you sell the, the you, it will not get captured as uh, customs duty but it get captured as excise duty later on because later on when you get it over here and then you pay it at 150 you clear it at 150 yeah trade goods trade goods is there then hmm 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 Correct. 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 That is what he is saying. Manufacturing process is taken place after manufacturing process. Can I claim it as hundred rupees? Is his question. What I am saying is, you are saying it is not possible. Of course, this is my opinion only. What I feel about it, you can still clear it at hundred rupees. You can still clear it at hundred uh, rupees, and then when you actually after you sell it, then again you get captured to tax. That's all. That's all. Uh, yes, removal for uh, goods manufacturing customs bonded with the, with the custom. Ha, huh, this you already answered. That's given in uh, Mustan uh, Tera Bai, which is Commissioner of Customs. We all had a doubt. What kind of duty it is? It is this kind of duty. Clearance from uh, bonded warehouse for uh, you can do three clearances. One is for home consumption, one is for re-exportation, and one is removal to other warehouse. That we have done it. Then uh, removal for uh, home consumption. What rate of duty to be paid? Rate on which I have got the goods to the warehouse, or rate on which I am uh, removing the goods from the warehouse? Yes. Rate on which I am removing the goods from the warehouse. Which section? Section 51, subsection 1, subclause B. That is what. Uh, like how you have uh, Rule 8 of Central Excise Rules 2002, when that gives you the date on which uh, the excise duty is payable, the date of removal. Similarly, section 15.1B gives the uh provision over here then uh, yes this is nothing but uh, 151b good center for home consumption at the 46 date on which bill of entry is presented i have come here i am going out it is date on which i have presented bill of entry for home consumption next goods cleared to warehouse under 68 from here it is going here date on which bill of entry for home consumption is presented from here Home consumption. This date is the date on which I have to pay the. Sorry, the rate. Of, what is the rate on that day? On that day, I have to pay the customs. Then uh, any other goods, date of payment of duty. Yeah, you can present the bill of entry in advance for a max. Yes. The question is whether you can file the bill of entry in advance. Answer is yes. You can file the bill of entry in advance. Maximum is 30 days within the day the uh, uh, the conveyance is uh, coming in. What shall be the uh, rate on which the 
uh, what what should be the rate of tax the rate of tax will be the day on which the um, inward uh, let inward order is given to the conveyance the day on which the uh, uh, ship comes inside let inward order given by the customs department the day on which the ship comes in that will be the day on which the what is the rate that will be the tax because you already filed the bill of entry okay but it's uh, it's more of uh, okay in queue but they generally call it let in uh, you know inverse order because that is the day it is actually coming whereas igm after he comes they are going to issue it so therefore the goods have already come so igm we can issue two or three days okay huh. private bonded warehouse um, no no on the kinds of the person if it is a eou it's a perpetual uh, uh, you know time that you have got if it is a person other than the eou then one year plus one year even if you have a private bonded warehouse also one year maximum another one year is going to give, they are going to give you out of the next uh, yes out of the one year you have to compulsively pay the duty compulsively pay the duty whereas for uh, eous you can it is perpetuity There is nothing to do with payment of duty, sir. Yes, sir. Next, uh, the last one is uh, baggage. Um, means all durable goods imported by uh, passenger, crew, two people, passenger and uh, crew. Next, what does it not include? It does not include a motor vehicle. It does not include alcoholic drinks. Third one, goods imported through Korea. Articles imported under advance license. These four things it will not include. Then um, baggage rules. Therefore, huh, what is the meaning of that? Baggage rules. Therefore, apply to baggage rules separately before or after uh, the passenger. What does that mean? Hmm. Hmm. What is the meaning of that? I mean, it's, what is the meaning of that statement? Baggage rules. Therefore, applicable to baggage received. Separately, before or after the passenger? I have come today. My baggage could have already come three days before, or my baggage can come three days later. So, therefore, for unaccompanied baggage, the baggage rules will apply. Next. Sir, that's also means that accompanied baggage, this would apply. Definitely, sir. This, yes, yes. Yes, under uh, for yes. What is not applicable, sir? Hmm. Hmm. Sir, for unaccompanied baggage what is happening is the baggage is not coming along with him so therefore the baggage rules applies to it that is all i am saying as as in when he is coming along with him baggage rule is no. it's applicable for both no No, no, no. Baggage, baggage rule is applicable to everything. But baggage rules, baggage rules applies to everything. What I was trying to tell over here is, unaccompanied baggages come. If unaccompanied baggages come, different rates of duty is going to be there. If different rates is going, duty is going to be there, what is going to take care of it? The baggage rules is going to take care of the unaccompanied baggage. Because for accompanied baggage, the day of the rate on which the day on which he is come, that rate is going to apply. In baggage, what are the exemptions that we are having? First exemption, bona fide baggage exempted from duty. What do you mean by bona fide baggage? Bona fide baggage means 
जे जेन्युन दैट इट इज यूज फॉर पर्सनल पर्पसेस बोनाफाइड इट इज बोनाफाइड माई आइटम्स वेर यू नो वेरिंग अपरल एंड पर्सनल इफेक्ट नेक्स्ट बैगेज रूल्स वॉट आर ऑल द रेस्ट्रिक्शंस ऑन बैगेजेस द रेस्ट्रिक्शंस ऑन बैगेजेस आर फॉरन करेंसी नोट्स और इंडियन करेंसी नोट्स यू कैन नॉट हैव मोर दैन द अमाउंट दैट इज स्पेसिफाइड बाई दी आर बी आई पॉइंट नंबर वन यू कैन नॉट हैव नाको टू ड्रग्स यू कैन हैव डोमेस्टिक पेट्स बट यू मस्ट ऑल्सो हैव हेल्थ सर्टिफिकेट फॉर इट सींग दैट यू नो इट इज एटलीस्ट ऑल दी अदर कंट्रीज आर वेरी स्केप्टिकल अबाउट इट ऑल दिस एक्सॉटिक बर्ड्स एंड एंडेजर स्पीसीज यू कैन नॉट हैव इट इनफैक्ट इट गेट सीज if they you know some uh, off late some uh, snakes and all got uh, seized then uh, articles made of ivory musk uh, reptile skin all these you must not have along with your baggage or rather you cannot treat this as your baggage next of course the owner has to give a declaration that this and all things i have got along with me what is the classification for baggage a special classification has been given for baggage that is 9803 next they are saying baggage is exempt from cvd that is equivalent to basic excise duty however the education says and second higher education says on customs is payable one laptop is allowed as a baggage no need to pay the customs duty on it then uh, yes say the uh, i've got items in my baggage and one of the items of my baggage is attracting duty at the rate of uh, nil percentage for example uh, drawings was that was attracting a nil percentage now all the other items are there in my baggage it's a i've got three four items now baggage is attracting a different rate so therefore can i take the advertisement out or sorry can i take the design charges out or drawings out and say look this drawings attracts a zero percentage duty so take the value of the drawings out only on the balance amount uh, i'll pay the service sorry customs duty or in other words should the value of the drawings be included in the baggage and tax be paid on the drawings also if it gets included in the um, baggage value then definitely tax will be paid on on the uh, drawing charges should it be included definitely should it be included or can i take it out because separately it is liable for a lesser amount of duty the provision says in such a case in such a case the drawings have to be included within the baggage and the customs duty will have to be paid on the entire baggage value next can furniture be treated as the personal effects i got a nice rocking chair which i was there in uh, using in uh, for and i've got it along with can furniture yes furnitures are treated as uh, you know personal effects jewelry can jewelry be treated as personal effects to a certain value to what value sir huh correct correct she got uh, what 25 lakhs to what extent sir sir uh, what has been uh, decided in that case is that for jewelry again they will have to see whether it is a new jewelry that they have purchased or it is nothing but the old jewelry which she has when she has gone she has put on and when she is come back it is the same jewelry if it is that case sir, then no customity is payable however if it looks like brand new jewelry then it is not personal effect it is something that i have purchased there which i have got it inside so i have to pay the customs duty correct correct what people generally do is uh, say uh, 10 grams of gold uh, they generally take it from over here when they go to dubai and all they give that uh, you know old jewelry because it will uh, be hollow and they get uh, new jewelry that's actually not in the nature of personal effects sir because i actually purchased a new one baggage means something which is personal effect i i must have it this something new i purchased okay then uh, the circular says what and all is your baggage 72 of uh, 98 jewelry camera video camera binoculars television music system typewriter one over here you have got uh, i think laptop also over here so this is uh, there in the baggage and then sports equipment cell phone there is also notification notification number 49 of 96 which uh, exempts duty on uh, goods listed in that notification only the bag only the items listed in that notification 
though it's a baggage, it is going to be exempted. Apart from this, when you come into India, there is something called as general free allowance. That is, up to a certain value of amount, you can get the goods, but not pay the customs duty. How much value? 25,000 rupees. So, who can claim it? A person who is greater than 10 years can claim it. Now, can it be clubbed? Say, I've got an equipment worth rupees 48,000. And uh, a couple have gone. So, therefore, the husband and wife together has 25 and 25. So, 50. This is uh, 48. So, can we claim an uh, exemption for it? Say, for it should look like it should uh, pay. But what they're saying is, you cannot actually club it. They're saying it is personal effect. So, personally, it must be 25 and 25. With the system, though you have got it, you cannot club it. Huh? Passenger. Uh, yes. Huh, that is what you can club it. The answer is no. That is that is what the decision says. You can't uh, club it. I was saying about a husband and a wife. So they will be about 10 years. So 25 and 25, can you claim it? You can't it seems. Next, um, yes, if you are returning from these countries, that is Nepal, Bhutan and uh, China, Hong Kong, etc., you will not get the 25,000 rupees uh, general uh, free allowance. Yeah. Uh, they give you 10,000 or? Yeah, 10,000. So. 25,000 they'll give you an exemption. Because there's going to be a product, they're not going to be a product. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product, fine. Yes. If not, I'm going to be a product